Okay, so um, I thought, having played a few games of Burrows and Badgers now, and hopefully you've seen those um, battle reports, and we're currently running the campaign, as well as the other game here and there. Uh, obviously, if you haven't seen them, um, obviously don't forget to go and have a look. Best thing to do is subscribe anyway. Um, but effectively, a lot of new people coming into the Facebook group, uh, so I'm seeing a lot of questions being asked uh, about Burrows and Badgers, and whilst the writer um, is very quick at coming back with the responses just thought it might be nice for those sort of playing their first few games or looking to get into burrows and badgers just to sort of go through some of the rules that may be um, sort of uh, people get slightly wrong um, or misunderstand due to the way it's worded in the rule book um, obviously the rule book itself which is a very lovely um, apparently Osprey did cut out a few of the explanation things in the rule book uh, which obviously is not Michael's fault but Osprey um, so at the end of the day a few things that I've got wrong in a few games a few things that uh, I've seen other people getting wrong so basically I've got to about I think 10 or 12 I'm just going to run through those and uh, sort of hopefully help you out or answer those questions um, that uh, maybe you hadn't uh, sort of thought about it that way before. So uh, the first one is uh, Fake Dice um, and I think uh, a few people have got this wrong in their first couple of games uh, because in a lot of other war games um, when you have Fate or um, other thing that they, they have various different ways of doing things fate in lord of the rings for example allows you to plus or minus the dice roll up by every point of fate that you use um in warhammer uh, age of sigma that type of thing obviously it's often used as re-rolls same as in 40k uh, but in this um you have an amount of fate that is generated at the start of a game uh, normally every warband starts with 10 uh, the rogues do get two extras, so they get 12, and obviously equally you can find extra bits when wandering if you're playing campaigns that will give you more fate. Also, it's a way of warbands being um, sort of, if you like, penalised uh, if they're more... Um, like the rating is higher than that of the opposing force. So for every 10 points warband rating higher you are than your opponent, effectively your opponent is gaining one extra fate roll. Uh, fate dice, fight, fate coin, whatever you're using for it. And so with that in mind, how does fate work? Well, basically, before you roll the dice, you can decide whether you wish to use any fate to give you an added chance. Now, in Burrows and Badges, it's very important to try and get your optimum roll, which is basically getting the highest number possible on the dice that you're rolling. So in the case of a D8, it would be an 8, and a D6, a 6, and so on and so forth. So if I'm up against an opponent and I'm rolling D6 versus D6, but I really want to try and make sure I basically have an increased chance of uh, hitting this guy, I might throw some fate in. And you can throw any amount of fate in, all right? Um, so you don't have to just use one if you really want to, you know, win initiative or you really want to kill this person, then at the end of the day, you can throw in two or three if really required, but they basically they only last for the game. So, um, and again, they are vitally important at the right time. So, uh, if I wanted to burn fate, I take two dice instead. So I'd be rolling two d6. If I took two fate, I'd be rolling three d6 and so on. Uh, basically, I'm still making one roll. I'm just choosing which one out of those three I want to choose. Obviously, in my case, no doubt I roll three ones. So at the end of the day, much, not much point using fate. Uh, but effectively, that's the, the premise behind fate. Okay, so that's fate. And that's that one out of the way. Uh, the second one is one that really sort of bamboozled me a little bit to start with, I'll be honest, uh, is the target value. And again, this is probably because the fact I know so many game systems and I skim through rules and I go, oh, yeah, 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 etc, um, etc. Et um, but every spell that you cast will be cast against either fortitude or presence of the um, caster. Now, some spells are roll-offs against, obviously, opponents, so that may be their nimbleness or their fortitude or their presence, whatever. But a lot of the cases, especially with the direct spells like lightning bolts and so on and so forth, you have a target value, okay? So a target number. So in the case of a lightning, its target value is 5, okay? So don't make the mistake I made and think you need a 5. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You need to beat a 5, okay? So the 5 is the, is the threshold you need to get above, Okay, so not the target. Even though it says it's a target, 
it's not the target, you've got to go above the target, okay? So at the end of the day, uh, that one there confused the hell out of me and our gaming group for a little while uh, because all of us read the book and we all got that one completely wrong because we obviously missed that one word where it says above uh, or beat or whatever it says in the book. But basically, yeah, if I'm casting a level five spell, I need to beat five, okay? Five isn't good enough. I need to get six, seven, eight or more, okay? So that's that one there. Um, next one. Wounds. Now, in Burrows and Badgers, every creature in Northumbria has 16 wound boxes. Okay, so again, um, another one that um, I see a lot of people getting wrong, including myself initially, um, you have 16 wounds. So you need 17 wounds to die, not 16. So when you run out of boxes to tick, okay, in Mordheim and various other ones, uh, basically that's it, you is dead because you're down to zero wounds. Uh, however, no, you've got to go below that. So technically every creature in uh, North Imbria has 16 wound boxes, but actually has 17 life points. Okay, so yeah, basically once they're all gone and you take one more point of damage, you are out of action. Okay, so 17 is actually the figure you need. Okay, um, not 16. So again, that's another one that catches a few people out. Um, right, next one is, uh, which is uh, rule number four on my list, not in any particular order, as you may have noticed, <laughs> okay. uh, just as they came into my head, uh, is when you're fighting and someone is outnumbered, uh, the cheat sheets that you can download or that you can get from Osprey or even, a th uh, again, slightly okay, wording issue more than anything. So it says that you are at minus one if you are outnumbered. What you need to bear in mind is you're outnumbered if you are basically fighting multiple people. So if you're already engaged, so my hound is already engaged with a squirrel, okay? Then an owl comes in, boom, hits my hound. Okay, so I'm now outnumbered two to one, all right? So the rule states minus one if you're outnumbered, okay, per person, all right? So we were playing that if there was two guys and then the owl came in, that'd be minus two, minus one, so on and so forth. It's actually minus one for everybody in that combat, so effectively, my hound, who's engaged with the other character, the owls come in, minus one for the other character, but again, I'm outnumbered and there's a second one there, which is the owl, so it's minus two. So it is a big difference, um, and obviously will have potentially changed quite a few things that, uh, or possibly changed a few outcomes of games that we've played. Um, so again, ganging up becomes very important, and also sort of, again, sort of means that things like mice and stuff like that, so again, if you've got a lot of, guys in your warband because you've gone for a small force you can really get some big uh, add-ons to that but on the same token bear in mind you can stack loads of minuses but you can't go below zero so at the end of the day you can't get negative numbers in this when you're doing the strike roll-offs so as such um, if you've got three or four guys and you can get enough people around that base okay minus four okay then uh, yeah, basically he's gonna need at least a five um, to score one point on the strike roll or the block roll, whichever. Okay, right, uh, spells that don't do damage uh, can be cast into combat, okay? So obviously things like heal, uh, giving the your friendly character the um, tough three, I think it is, the skin of rocks or whatever. Uh, but basically your wizard can cast into combat on your friendly guys uh, because it's not doing any damage, okay? So those sort of things can be can be done. That's rule number five that again, sometimes people get a bit confused with and have to refer back to the book. Okay, uh, number six seems an obvious one, but uh, you must declare your action at the start of your move, okay? So uh, basically if I've got someone and I wish to move them, I have to declare what action I'm doing because it's not two actions. Again, a lot of people get a bit confused by this. You have one action, but all actions come with a free move preceding it. Okay, so the move is not necessarily part of the action. Okay, the action may be to sprint. So that is the action you declare. Okay, you may move once. Um, and then your second part of your move is the sprint action. Or you could move and combat. Okay, move and cast, move and shoot, move and search, that move and hide even. Okay, so the action is that latter part and you have one action per turn.
okay, not two, so you don't always get the free move, okay, so again, this is aimed at sort of beginners, but again, if you're only one or two games into burrows, some of the things that you need to be around. Also things like if you're ambushing you should really declare what action you're doing at the start because obviously if then the um, if you get ambushed by somebody then obviously you can't change your action you've already declared it is the way I would read that. Okay so um, on to number seven um, let's have a thing um, number seven yes so um, all right ambushing so if I have multiple people in ambush Okay, they and my opponent activates a model. I can activate everybody in ambush within range, okay, of that person who's activated. All right, however, the ambush does not count as an action, and as such, if my opponent had anyone in ambush, they cannot ambush my ambushers. Okay, so it doesn't count as a physical action, as so she can't be so an ambusher can't be ambushed against. However, obviously, once the ambusher has ambushed, then unless there is a special skill that allows them to stay in hiding, they've exposed themselves and equally cannot do any other actions for the rest of the turn. Okay, so that is number seven. All right, uh, den upgrades. Okay, so this is more from a campaign point of view now. Uh, den upgrades automatically happen unless they specifically state that you need to assign members of your warband to the den uh, upgrade. So I think it's things like the smithy, you do, it specifically states you have to do that. You also don't get those den upgrades until after the first turn. So when you create your warband and you uh, decide on what uh, den upgrade you're going to have, you don't get the benefit of that until the end of your first game. Okay, um, let's have a number, what was that, number eight, I think. So, uh, number nine, uh, bows and slings. So, anything that's basically thrown, okay, um, does benefit from the strength of the person throwing it. So, again, uh, this one was sh uh, shown to me on the first game I ever played, uh, Tim, but apparently a lot of people get this one wrong. So, uh, if you had a badger, which I think is strong three, might be strong four, but anyway, you can check the rule book, uh, and he's armed with a bow, then that arrow effectively is strong three. Obviously, it doesn't apply to guns, it doesn't apply to crossbows, because the crossbow has its own inherent strength based on the mechanism. Uh, but bows and slings, um, I think they're the only two. Um, Throwing knives as well, actually, I suppose. Um, basically, they will benefit from any strong um, skill that the animal has or any innate strong. All right. So um, when you look at the models first off and you think, well, a bit of a waste giving a beaver a bow. No, nope, not at all. Uh, they're lethal. OK, so that's that one. Um, Right, and then I think the last one, so I think this is number 10, uh, probably have to go back and check in a minute, <laughs> so um, spells and wizards, okay, so when creating your warband, okay, um, and you want to take a mage, he casts five pennies to uh, be a mage for every spell he learns, equally each spell that he learns will inherently give him delicate one and weak one um, due to those years of study and not being down the gym, okay, now however, if you gain skill, uh, sorry, not skills, if you gain um, experience points in a campaign system and you go up levels and choose to take spells instead, they do not add delicate and weak, so they don't stack. However, if at the start when you create your mage, you want him to have three spells, which is great, but you can only cast once per turn, remember, but also it will make him delicate three and weak three. However, if you create him with only the one spell, and rely on him getting some experience and then going up levels after two skill upgrades that allow him to take a spell if you get them then he would be still weak one delicate one but still have the three spells okay so again something to bear in mind when creating your war bands all right so uh, other than that hope that's been helpful to you um, and obviously again do subscribe loads of uh, burrows content on this channel and going forward um, I'm going to let you into a little secret. Um, we're going to be playing in a massive Red Wall Abbey soon. Okay, so if that doesn't make you subscribe, then I don't know what else will, to be honest with you. Um, if you want to see a Burrows and Badgers game, 
in a red wall abbey three by two that kind of size we're talking huge we're talking the whole board being the abbey um, then at the end of the day subscribe now okay <laughs> and uh, that will be coming hopefully in the not too distant future um, so drawings are done but obviously buildings got to be built and um, then we've got to get the game on so um, any questions or queries uh, then obviously put them in the comments below because uh, I do like reading them and obviously we can check and come back to you um, also do check out the Facebook group uh, for Burrows and Badgers which is Burrows and Badgers uh, on Facebook uh, and do check out uh, the miniature range at Oswald Miniatures okay so thanks for watching and we will see you soon bye bye